The following program is brought to you by Total Theater Online. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the staff or management of WGBB. You're listening to the station that serves your community, 1240 WGBB. And now it's time for Dave's Gone By with David Lefkowitz. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Welcome, everybody, to the 135th episode of Dave's Gone By. It's Thursday, July 14th, 2005, and I am here, as I am every Thursday night, with an hour of comedy, music, and talk radio. And radio itself has been very prominent in the last few episodes. A couple of weeks ago, I was yakking about Jack, that crappy new music format taking over stations around the country. As one radio pundit wrote, when you finally figure out what the format is, you realize it's just 1980s oldies. Big whoop. So much for a broader range of music and a widening demographic. For this, the 9-11 CBS FM. They traded 40, 50, 60, 70-year-olds for 30-year-olds which on one level is encouraging because every other station traded them for 15-year-olds. Still, they fired all the DJs. I mean, why should they pay salaries and health insurance to a bunch of losers too ugly for television, right? Still, even program directors and the people in the business realize that Jack isn't a good idea. It's a stopgap, something to fall back on while they try to search for a miracle to save terrestrial radio, which is a good laugh because they spent the past 35 years destroying radio. So, okay, I did my rant about CBS FM and Jack a couple of weeks ago, and then to calm me down and remind me that there were still people out there who cared about rock and roll music. People who listened to the radio in the good old days, not just as background noise while they jabber jabbered on their cell phones, but to be part of the greater music community, to hear new stuff and connect with like-minded listeners and disc jockeys who dug the same bands. Folks who were proud of their record collections and couldn't wait to share a new song or album with friends. So, Last week, my guest was a fellow named Ari Abramowitz, author of The Pocket Rocket Music Finder. A real good idea. It has to do with telling the reader, look, if you like this band or this artist, here's another half dozen musicians who are in the same genre. They might be reminiscent of one of your idols. For example, Ari played a Paul McCartney Beatles song, followed by a tune by Emmett Rhodes, an all-but-forgotten pop smith from the early 1970s. And, as Ari said, it sure sounded like Rhodes made the album Paul McCartney could have made, or should have made, after Ram. Or maybe even the greatest album the Beatles didn't make just before Rubber Soul. And we talked a lot about relatively unknown or unheralded artists who sort of sounded like famous mega-popular artists. We played a little Tori Amos, followed by Kate Bush, and then Regina Spector, that kind of thing. And the kind of thing real FM DJs used to do back in the day. Now you have to go to WFMU or Bill Skelza for that kind of we-do-this-for-love feeling. So I've really been trouncing on radio in general, with good reason. But I haven't given it its due either, even the commercial side. I mean, most of the music we grew up listening to, we probably heard first on the radio, even if we later felt radio was ignoring the very music it was cool enough to introduce us to in the first place. And for the most part, you can really say, don't blame the DJ. I have to imagine there isn't a person who gets into the microphone side of radio. Okay, maybe some folks have such beautiful, mellifluous voices and perfect diction that they're told from day one, you should really go into radio. But everybody else, we do it because, you know, we love the music, the medium. We love talking to people, connecting on a broad but intimate level with a wide swath of humanity. So the DJs get jobs as best they can, pay their dues, move around the country, try to find a secure, steady-paying job because unless your last name is Stern or Imus, or you own the station, or these days, if you own a hundred stations, you don't get rich in this business. And even if you land a decent gig, and a steady job, and a music format you can tolerate, every month brings a new ratings book, 
or a new management team, a new focus group, a new list of rules, and eventually all of the above when the format changes entirely and you've suddenly gone from announcing Mel Torme to twanging for Trisha Yearwood, or you're out the door. It's a nasty, very sad business, much worse than, say, being an actor which has its own heartbreaks, but at least that's a small, tight community and everybody's in it. And I'm not talking about the Hollywood or TV land level, but at the New York level. Everybody's in it to make good art and entertainment, and hopefully make a living without waiting tables. Radio, you're basically beholden to a bunch of rich guys who buy and sell stations like stakes in a poker game, and station managers who are sure that the next gimmick, the next arcane rule, will save their jobs for another two years. And yet, somehow, some people still make a living playing music on the radio. They persevere. They make a name for themselves. They have a following. They have a nostalgic undertow with fans who say, Oh gosh, I've been listening to you since high school. If a local DJ's name gets in the newspaper now and then, and we have no idea what they look like but we've heard their names for years and we have a good feeling about them. The one of those people is here tonight. Her name is Valerie Smaldone. She is the midday host of WLTW, better known as Light FM. Has been for almost 20 years. That is an eon in New York radio. In fact, Valerie's whole career has been in New York. She was lucky enough to avoid the wandering gypsy life getting started in the business, first working in White Plains, then Mount Kisco, and finally LTW in Manhattan. And she has produced and hosted dozens of syndicated programs that play around the world, and she's done more than a thousand voiceovers. And Valerie will be bringing her voice to these airwaves tonight, because she's also written or co-written and co-appears in a new off-Broadway play. It's called Spit It Out. Yes, get the dirty jokes out of the way now, because Spit It Out is actually about a long-term female friendship. Valerie wrote it with her friend, Amy Coleman. Now, Amy is no slouch either. She's a singer-actress who was in the original off-Broadway production of Beehive at the Village Gate. She started as a pop cabaret singer, and then Amy went on to do regional theater. She was in an improv troupe called Hot Peaches. She toured Italy, singing the songs of Italian composer Enzo Filippelli, and came back to the States to form an original blues band called Sweet Potato. Then she returned to the theater. She was in a popular and pretty good off-Broadway musical called The Last Session. And now, as I said, she's teamed up with Valerie Smaldone in a show that celebrates their friendship, all the things they've been through, together and apart, marriages, career ups and downs, trying to make it in the music biz, and the way that they both supported each other as friends and as women. That is the story of Spit It Out, and we'll hear more about it in our Inside Broadway segment this week, plus more about the show from Amy Coleman and Valerie Smaldone, our special guests tonight on Dave's Gone By. And we have another special guest, not talking about radio, but television. Two weeks ago, MTV launched a brand new cable television network called Logo, specifically designed to appeal to gay and lesbian audiences. Clever idea, and I think that deserves some coverage. But I'm not really in a position to judge the channel either way. First of all, I'm in the wrong demographic. But even more than that, my cable system sucks, so I'm not getting any new channels anytime soon. What to do? Well, I do know someone who would be ideal to comment on the Logo channel. His name is Peter Fitzgerald. And he's been on the show a couple of times over the years, whenever we needed an openly gay perspective on something. So, I'm excited to report that Peter will join us later in the program to give us the lowdown on Logo. Busy show tonight. Exciting show. Brought to you by Hewlett Minuteman Press for all your copying and printing needs. And by Total Theater's Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine. Your everything theater guide. Dave's Gone By listeners get 10% off both sponsors. So listen close when we tell you more about them later in the show. And thanks for listening closely every week to this mix of smart talk, simply talk, special talk, and music. It's rated DGB 13 and hosted by yours truly, 
Dave Lefkowitz, radio personality, theater critic, music lover, and televisionist. We've got some bills to pay, and then some broad to weigh, right after this. Oh my God, the wedding is next month. We need flyers, invitations, booklets. Irving, we are screwed! No, we're not, Pearl. We'll just go to Hewlett Minuteman Press. Hewlett Minuteman? What can they do? Printing, engraving, really? letterhead, souvenirs. Wonderful! Are they still at 1315 Broadway in Hewlett? Yep. 516-569-5577. Well, stop dawdling! Let's go! Yes, dear. Day after the wedding, I kill her. Hey, Dave's Gone By listeners! If you like hearing me, you'll love reading me even more. So hurry and get my book, Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World, filled with hilarious plays that were performed in New York like King Solomon the Wise and Blind Date. 232 pages of Pure Dave, only $20 hardcover, $12 trade paperback. To get your copy, call 516-295-1511 or visit my website. Inside Broadway, brought to you by Total Theater's Performing Arts Insider, your everything theater guide. It's the middle of the summer, which means New York City starts to go crazy over fringe. No, not the cuffs on faded blue jeans or offbeat political parties, but fringe theater. Stuff that isn't made for big budget Broadway bonanzas. Well, not usually. Don't forget that a couple of years ago, there was this zany fringe musical, a satire, no less, but an absolutely impossible title with no commercial potential. And yet, somehow the wonderful Town made it to Broadway and played there for more than two years. And there have been other fringe success stories, like Debbie Does Dallas, which went on to an off-Broadway run, and plays like Never Swim Alone and Last Train to Nibrock. But the fringe at its core isn't about what might happen down the road. It's about discovering new talent, fun, funky, and usually fairly short, new plays and theater companies from around the country and around the world. Now, the big one, the Fringe Grande, happens in August. That's the New York International Fringe Festival, with a couple of hundred productions to choose from. But there's a smaller festival happening this month, starting on Monday and running through August 7th. It's called the Midtown International Theater Festival. Nope. They don't even have fringe in the title, but it's pretty fringy. Although the good thing about this particular play banquet is it's fairly self-contained. All the shows, and there's nearly 50 of them, but they're all pretty much in the same theater complex on West 36th Street. Every single one is on the same block between 8th and 9th Avenue, and they're all air-conditioned, which, if you've ever sat through a true fringe festival, is not always a guarantee. John Chatterton, the producer of the festival and the owner of the theaters, says his philosophy of the event is, quote, a paradoxical combination of selectivity and diversity. We encourage plays of all racial and sexual stripes in all genres to attract audiences of all tastes. So, let's give a look to some of the more intriguing plays and musicals booked for the Midtown International Theater Festival. There's Sex and the City. That's sex with a C and city with an S, a parody of the groundbreaking cable comedy show. I think the women are still played by women, so it's not that off the wall, but could be fun. There's a musical about Princess Di getting to live her life over again. There's a science fiction love story about moth exterminators called Feasting on Cardigans. Unartistically frustrated productions will be presenting in the Caligula, about the last days of the most infamous emperor the world has ever known. As their press release puts it, two senators seek to end Caligula's life because sleeping with horses is just plain wrong. No argument there. Some pretty interesting women in a couple of shows. There's Penny Four Eyes, about a 14-year-old who breaks out of her abusive home to start a riot girl band. There's a one-woman dance piece called Mental Paws. Flyers and Other Tales is a series of one-acts about invisible people, 
I mean, invisible in the sense of these are the people who try to hand you discount flyers for clothing stores and Burger Kings, or they play music in the subways. Folks on the periphery, but very much in our world. Another show is titled The Girls Who Wore Black, all about women of the beat generation who are kind of shadowed out by their more dominant male counterparts. There's also a show called Spit It Out. It features Amy Coleman, a veteran of off-Broadway musicals, and Valerie Smaldo, the voice of New York's Light FM. They've been friends for a bunch of years and have gone through failed marriages, career ups and downs, and the basic hazards and compensations of being women. Amy and Valerie joke and reminisce and spit it out, and they'll do the same for us later on in this episode of Dave's Gone By. We'll look over a couple more festival shows in just a minute, but not before I remind you that Off Off Broadway is a pretty capacious entity. Although it's spread out, it has more going on than Broadway and Off Broadway combined. Yet it's much harder to get information on what's playing in downtown and way west midtown theaters. One of the few places that covers Off Off Broadway in depth is Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine, a bible of the theater industry for 61 years and going strong, with comprehensive listings, reviews, rumors, contact information. Performing Arts Insider is the guide professionals use when they want to know what's playing on the stages of Manhattan. Since, you know, the upcoming August issue lists all the Broadway shows and the major off-Broadway productions, but you will also find dozens of small and fringe performances inspiring you to see more theater, to know more about theater, and to have a fun time finding out about theater. All it costs is about $12 a month for Dave's Gone By listeners, because you get 10% off subscription prices to Performing Arts Insider. For more information, visit performingartsinsider.com. The rates are up there, and you can even see sample pages of the magazine. You can also call 516-295-1511 for more information. Area code 516-295-1511. Subscribe now to Performing Arts Insider because it's Broadway the best way. Continuing inside Broadway, we're going off-off-Broadway looking at the 6th Annual Midtown International Theater Festival with performances running through August 7th. Shows like Glory Road, a musical update of Moliere's Tartuffe. Good Opinions, a comedy about a coat check girl who's magically able to predict whether the New York Times will like a Broadway show or not. The festival also has a revival of Terence McNally's farce It's Only a Play, and a puppet satire about China called Revolutionary Chickens. And, like most fringe festivals, there are always a couple of shows with terrifically goofy titles. At Midtown, you'll see Sex, Cellulite, and Large Farm Equipment. That's a one-woman show by a former sex columnist and marathon runner. There's Under My Apron, about the travails of a waiter, and the more experimental one act, when silence explodes, fetus, don't break your egg. Don't ask. But do go to midtownfestival.org to find out more about this fun event. All the plays are listed, as is ticket information and a whole history of all the shows produced in years past. Midtownfestival.org. This is summertime. There's still lots to see on Broadway, but you don't have to go to Broadway to see fun, interesting, inexpensive theater. Maybe off-off Broadway, but you'll still find it in Performing Arts Insider, and you'll still hear about it here every week, Inside Broadway. We've just been Inside Broadway, thanks to TotalTheater.com and Performing Arts Insider. Hey, theater lovers! Do you like the Inside Broadway segment on Dave's Gone By? If you do, you can hear even more about Broadway and beyond on a special segment I do on Worldview. What's Worldview? Tell them, Joe Salzo. Worldview is a 60-minute conversation about what's going on in the world, and it features Dave Lefkowitz's Theater Review and other great segments only on WGBB. When is that? Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Don't watch 60 Minutes. Instead, spend 60 minutes with us. Hi, this is Dave Lefkowitz of Dave's Gone By, reminding you to tune in every Thursday night at 8 
and 11 Eastern Time for the best of Dave's Gone By on Live365.com and the special channel DFSX Radio. All you gotta do is go to my website, davesgoneby.org, click on the link, and you can hear a classic episode of Dave's Gone By every Thursday night, 8 and 11. Go to dfsxradio.com for more of me. Welcome back to Dave's Gone By on AM 1240 WGBB in Freeport, New York, and live streaming on the web at AM 1240 WGBB. Dot com And uh, my one suggestion to all of you listening is spit it out. No, that that's, has nothing to do with whatever you might uh, be eating at the moment or whoever you might be eating at the moment. No! <laughs> this, this is a titular title kind of a thing because it's the name of a show that is going to be playing or opening July 18th as part of the Midtown International Theater Festival off-off Broadway in New York. And uh, no, there's, there's bunches of festival plays that are going to be playing all through July and August. There's two different fringe festivals in New York, and a lot of the shows are worth checking out, a lot are not. And this one sounds kind of interesting. I mean, this one involves basically two women talking about their lives and their goals and their dreams and careers. And, and sure, that sounds kind of cool, but what makes this one extra interesting are the two folks who created this show called Spit It Out. One of them is someone who has quite a bit of experience in theater and musical theater. Her name is Amy Coleman. And then the other person is someone who has a bit of experience in that, but more experience in radio, in New York radio. You probably have heard of Valerie Smaldone because she's been one of the, the leading lights on New York Radio at Light FM. So I am very happy and excited to have both of these lovely ladies, Amy Coleman and Valerie Smaldone, on Dave's Gone By. Hello, welcome to Hello. the neighborhood. Hi, hi, Dave. Good, good to have you here. So, so let's talk show first, and then, and then to the radio stuff. Um, how did Spit It Out come about? Well, um, uh, no, this, I'm sorry, this is who talking this first. This is Valerie. Hi, Valerie. Okay. Hi, good to speak with you. Uh, we're, we're delighted to be on your show, first of all, and uh, and thanks for having us on. Uh, I'll just jump in quickly, and then Amy will put her spit it out two cents in. <laughs> um, Amy, Amy and I actually met uh, at a health spa about seven or eight years ago, and uh, the play opens in a health spa. So it sort of chronicles our friendship in a in a fictional way, it talks about how two women from completely different worlds uh, really are the same uh, beings inside and help each other to move on in their lives in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we also have lots of music in the show. We have um, nine songs, and which kind of just gives it another feel. And you see uh, these two women in their own uh, lives, which are very, very different. Valerie plays a character who uh, works in TV, and I play a character that works in blues joints. And whereas in real life, Valerie works in radio, and you kind of work more in the musical theater. Well, in, in I theater work genre. in blues joints, too, but <laughs> oh, okay, cool. also musical theater. Yeah. Cool. And so what, what is autobiographical about the show, and what is what takes the leap to fiction? Just the fact that we, obviously, the, uh, the careers are pretty much parallel to what we, we do in our lives, but also... Um, it it uh, it reflects on our backgrounds, being Italian American, myself, and Amy being uh, from Jewish. the Jewish Eastern European background. Oh, fun, funny you don't you don't look Jewish. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You're Jewish. Good <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it talks about our families and our traditions and the things that bind us. And one of the things we like to say about the play is it's about uh, being living outside the box, no matter what box you happen to be in. And more than that, I just say people come see the show so you can understand what that's about. Well, sure, but but this is radio and we have some time to fill, so I, I do want you to get a little <laughs> more specific, please. Um, in other words, what typifies this show as opposed to, and I'm not making a direct comparison, but to something like Menopause the Musical? Oh, it's or, very different, I think. Um, we Menopause the Musical is really about people who are in the throes of menopause. Well, yes. Um, and we're these characters a little before. <laughs> <laughs> well, not good. Congratulations. <laughs> but I think it, it, it really is more about the dynamics of um, a friendship and how, you know, I don't think there are that many plays or movies that, that really talk about that. 
uh, Beaches, I guess, was one, mm. and Thelma and Louise. But uh, this kind of chronicles these two women and how their friendships trans- friendship transforms each other. Well, were there any major crises that, I guess, in real life, um, or has it been a fairly smooth sailing sort of thing for both of you guys? Oh, for us as friends? Yeah. Well, I think what was interesting is that as we became friends and the friendship developed, because it developed as we wrote, we met at the health spa. Mm-hmm. Literally within two weeks, we started to develop our friendship and started to write together at that moment. So it really had parallel lives. And um, as we were writing these pieces, we started to realize that life was imitating art in a way because there's a conflict in the play and uh, we had never really had a conflict, but in the last couple of years, the closer we got and the more intense the relationship became, just like in a marriage or in a, in a you know, intense business partnership, issues come to life, as mm-hmm. they are apt to, and we started to have to deal with those issues. So it's been a very interesting journey, and if anything, uh, the friendship has um, deepened with the writing of the play, and we got to know each other and, and our wounds <laughs> <laughs> much more as we started to move along together in this, in this path. Now, how are the logistics of doing a play within the context of, of the Fringe Festival, as opposed to, say, opening it off of Broadway or off Broadway or trying to workshop it out of town? Why the specific decision to do it as part of the Fringe? Well, it's, they, it's not the Fringe, first oh, of all. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. It's the Midtown International. International, I'm sorry, yes. We, we actually, you know, submitted our script and they um, accepted us. And what's good about it is they give you a space and they do their own publicity as well. And... We've it, in the past few years, these festivals have really been a great place for people to kind of get their stuff seen, and a few have really taken off from those. So, you know, we're using it as that as a vehicle. It all, it legitimizes the play. Also, it it says, wow, somebody thinks that there's there are legs here, and uh, that it's worth showcasing and having people come and see. So, it really helped us to um, to continue to move forward. As you may know, Dave, last, I guess a couple of years ago, we produced this at a restaurant in Little Italy ourselves. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a great experience. It was something very different. Um, and from that run that we did, which was about four months, we then went back to the drawing board and started again to re- rewrite and revise the script. Because once it was out there in a living, breathing theatrical environment, we saw what didn't work and what could work, and we started again. And... That's the great thing about all of these opportunities is for the writer to um, to really see how it plays and to see how it moves on stage. Well, I have, I have to say that it was kind of gutsy of a restaurant to allow a show called Spit It Out. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> well, people are, are clanking their glasses and eating their veal. Yes. Um, now, Amy, you have had some significant um, theater and music experience in New York. Mm-hmm. I mean, just yeah. from your bio, I mean, you were the voice of the plant? Well, yeah, that was in a regional theater, but yes, I did do that, yes. A little, a little shop of ours, and yes. you were in Beehive. In, Beehive, in New York, and the Beehive. last session, I don't know if you ever saw that. Oh my God, you were, oh yeah, I that was, was a Vicky. nice show. Vicky, Vicky, yeah. yeah the, in fact, the guys who wrote the last session just had a new piece that they're working yeah, on. Yeah, the big voice. Yeah, it was in Los Angeles. I didn't get oh. to see it, but the people who did said that it was very good, that, yes, that it's it going to go somewhere. Yeah, that's. I believe that it will, yeah. So, um, well, aside, apart from this, what do you currently do, by the way, Amy? Well, I perform and I teach somewhat, and I also, we have a business, uh, Valerie and I, too, a special, a special event business, so we do that as well. Valerie, well, we know what you do, but... But tell us a little longer, or a bit more about how long you've been doing it. I started at Light FM uh, years ago, and uh, <laughs> yeah. it's been a wonderful run. It's uh, 21 years. Don't do the math. Mazel tov. Well, Thank no, you. That's the, you did the math for us. 21 <laughs> years. Congratulations. I mean, you got to know that in New York radio, that's an amazing uh, run. It's been a wonderful run, and I've worked with the, the top in my field. I have fabulous bosses, and I've been extremely lucky. So. Yes, it's been a wonderful run, and uh, I, I intend to stay around for a little while longer, as, as long as they want me. Um, you know, I work noon to four, so it's a great base. From that, I've done a lot of voiceovers. A lot of people get to hear me on the air, and, and um, it's sort of like this open audition process all the time. Um, but, you know, theater has always been a love for me, and I used to be in theater years ago, and to come back to this passion is just amazing for me not only as a as an actress but as a writer and to work with somebody like Amy who is just the best 
combination I could think of. You know, it just all worked out. And who would have thought when I met her in a health spa <laughs> in, in the Catskills that this would be the case oh, seven Catskills. years later? I didn't know, didn't know that, but, but but you can't. I'm sorry, but you can't push me off radio that quick because I, I did want to ask a, a little bit more because you've been doing it for so long. Yes. Yeah. And um, considering what's been going on in radio, not just now, but but you know, I'd love to get your thoughts on. Well, first of all, you have heard that Light FM is is now changing format going to be called Harold. <laughs> Same music, but but they're just naming it after well, that's somebody. that's to me, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nothing's changing. I just, I just want to give it a, a nice name that people will remember. Okay. But honestly, what do you think of the whole, um, the dissolution of CBS FM and in a more general sense, um, this kind of new formatting called Jack, etc.? Well, can I be totally honest with you? That's why I do this show, yes. Okay. I, I have a different opinion from most people in radio. I, I was speaking with a colleague this morning, and I, I, I think I horrified her when I said what I said. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Nothing lasts forever. Everything has a shelf life. CBS FM was a heritage station in New York. The Yankees were a heritage team. They're having trouble right now. Things will never remain the same forever. Light FM has been a heritage station. God bless it. It's been fabulous. At some point... It will change, and I will not be here, and this whole scene will shift. I think things have a shelf life. I think things live them out as they need to. Uh, we love CBS. We love the talent. But the technology, Dave, and the mm -hmm. world that we live in now is dictating a different kind of movement in the business, and it's changing before our ears and eyes. So what I think they did was trying to sort of live with the new world that we're moving into. I mean, Howard Stern leaving terrestrial radio was the first big strike in how things are going to go from now on. And okay. I think with satellite, Internet, podcasting, with um, HDTV, there will be new opportunities for people. I don't think people should panic or be frightened. I think you just have to understand there's a shift that's going on and that it's okay and things are going to you know, just move in a different direction. I think that there's a lot of sense in that, and I do agree with a lot of that. And one of the things that I like, one of the only things I like about some of the new formatting is that supposedly it is broader. It is the fact that, that you're going to be playing, or, or these formats will be playing, a wider range of music from more decades. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's something terrible about playing Tom Jones and then playing the White Stripes on the same playlist. That's really cool. What bothers me, and I guess a lot of the CBS people, is that it really won't be like that. They'll just jettison everything from the 1950s, probably through the 60s, as well as all the DJs. And, and not that you won't be working there anymore as a DJ and they'll let somebody else come in, but there, there just won't be any actual people behind the mics announcing or talking about the show, the, the songs, the music. I mean, do you see that? Yeah, of course. And, but I also think, just look, years ago... Radio, we had a small playlist because that was the ideology at the time. That in order to have listeners, you have to have a very tight playlist. Now they're throwing in all these things. It's the, the, the pendulum is swinging the other way. And at some point, it'll go back and people will want their personalities again. And mm. it may not be on terrestrial radio, but it will be elsewhere. So what I'm saying is I totally understand people feeling uh, displaced and, and, and you know, uh, just very hurt by the whole, the whole way this happened. But I think there will be another way that they can be used, and it might even be a better situation down the road. I don't know what that is, right. but my feeling and my gut is that we just have to be open to the change and open to going with a, a new shift, a new paradigm of how radio is going to exist in the next few years. Yeah. Because I mean, we're in yeah. a transition now that is huge. It's a huge transition. And when it all shakes out, things are going to settle down, and I think talent will have new opportunities they did not consider before. Hmm. What do you think? I mean, I, mean, I know you're not in the biz, Amy, but what do you think? I, I agree. I do. I think that... Um, I do agree with what Valerie's saying. I hope that that's how it happens. I hope that, you know, doing the satellite uh, radio uh, opens up a whole other world and that, um, you know, uh, that other people get a chance to be heard. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's also that the fact... I think they... The weird thing about CBS is that they um, kept a website, apparently, of their old kind of music, and that they specifically designed the new Jack format for, for these young people with pods and iPods and, and for downloading songs. And I figured, well, isn't that backwards? Because it's the people who are in their 50s and 60s and 80s who are set in their ways 
who are just going to know how to turn on their radio and listen or not. And it's the young folks who will just jump right to the web and will start iPodding and downloading and, and things like that. Well, also, I mean, but the folks, the young folks, a lot of young folks are not even listening to radio. They mm-hmm. are already on their iPods and they're not paying attention. So the Jack format might be for a little bit of an older audience, actually. You, you know, let's see how the demographics shake hmm. out. And maybe, wouldn't it be wonderful if the older folks decide, hey, I'm going to learn how to go on the Internet because the music I want to hear and my, my disc jockeys are on on that format. I think that would be very cool to get people to try something they haven't considered before. I love when people think outside the box. That's what our play is about. I have to bring it back to our play. Sure. No, and by the way, the play is called Spit It Out. It opens July 18th and runs until when? Um, August 6th. August 6th as part of the Midtown... Uh, in, in, it is a, a fringe. It's not the New York International Fringe Festival. I guess you would call it a fringe. Yeah, it's a well. It's not the fringe, but you can call it a kind of a fringe festival, but a little f. With a, with a little f. Okay. Um, and do you have a theater that is actually playing? It's yeah, Midtown Workshop International Theater, theater Festival. I'm sorry, which which uh, theater? It's called the Workshop Theater. And um, what's the address? Of? 312 West 36th Street. 312 West 36th Street. So that puts it just off 8th Avenue. Right. And you can go to Smart Ticks to buy tickets. Okay. Uh, do you happen to have that phone number? I can yes. get it. It's 212-868-4444. Say that again. That's 212-868-4444 or Smart Ticks. That's S-M-A-R-T-T-I-X dot com. And again, we're talking with Valerie Smaldone and Amy Coleman, the authors of Spit It Out, about their friendship. It's autobiographical, but also fictional. I mean, they're playing different characters and talk about how that friendship has carried them through their lives. Um, I want to wrap this up, but anything else you want to say either about the show or about your friendship or about radio in general? Yeah, my last words about sure. radio and, and just getting back to how people are using it, I think it's just an interesting time. I don't think people should panic, and I do think that stations like Light FM and, and other stations in New York City that we know and love will stay around for a while because people do want to hear their, their familiar favorites, and we still have a um, commitment to our, our community and our audience, so we're not going anywhere. I don't, I don't want people to think we are. But I'm just saying on a theoretical basis, I think change is always interesting and good. Hey, notwithstanding the fact that Valerie is at Light FM, and that, you know, and Amy is, is not so much in the radio biz, but if you each had an ideal radio station that you would listen to, and don't schmooze me by saying WGBV because I know that's not true, um, <laughs> what would it be? What would your radio station be like? Well, this is Amy, and I'll tell you, I, I think um, I would like to hear an eclectic mix of every kind of music, and it wouldn't necessarily be... People that were known, it would really be a broad, uh, you know, array of, of many different artists, um, you know, and the less commercial, the better for me. Cool. And Valerie? Well, you know, Broadway music is my first love. And oh. in fact, I my first show was Showstoppers on WFUV. And that was really the best time of my life in radio. I had such, and I didn't know what I was doing, but I had such a good time producing that show and interviewing composers and producers and playing from my record album collection of Broadway shows. So I love, I happen to love Broadway music, and I would love to hear more show music um, and world music. I love music from other countries. I don't have to understand the language, but I think there's a rhythm and there's a sense of of just uh, joy that you can get from listening to, you know, Moroccan music or Brazilian music. So I would love a mix of that. And um, Well, I think New Sounds on, was that WNYC caters to that a little bit, or David yes. Guy's World Music, yeah. Yes, yes. Cool. So, yeah, we just like interesting and new and fun. Well, I, you know, I hope program directors for, well, I know, I know there's actually theater music on satellite, so that's out there, and I think on web radio too. So, but I hope, program directors are listening somewhere and rethinking some of the things they're thinking. But I hope everybody listening is thinking of going to see Spit It Out at the Midtown International Theater Festival on um, in the theater on West 36th Street from July 18th through August 6th. Thank you so much. Thank, to you. My Thank you, Dave. And uh, also to women who, uh, who are considering coming, this is great to c- come as a group and uh, celebrate your friendship, especially for women over a certain age. <laughs> like me. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You want to buy a watch? No? How about a dishwasher? Vacation to Europe? Well, what's wrong with selling my stuff this way? How else? 
advertise on days gone by? Take a 30 or 60 second ad on the radio? I can't afford that. I can. And I'll reach thousands of listeners all over America? How do I... DaveScoggBuy.com has all the info, huh? Rate card and everything. Done deal! Hey, before I go, wanna buy a raincoat full of watches? AM 1240 is the place to go If you wanna listen to great radio Like silly and smart talk on Dave's Gone By Thursdays at 7, just give it a try Do you like the future? Well, what could be sweller Than psychic predictions from famous George Keller Into your future, she'll cleverly delve Catch her on Wednesdays in 11 to 12 Fridays at 6, you got Bonnie D. Graham Love and romance, fill up her program Hear her suggestions on Long Island's dating Then go and find love, cause it beats Master Saturday night from midnight to three, raucous rock music and wild comedy, Jimmy and Robin behind the mic, three solid hours of humor you like, opinions in politics, find out what's new, Sundays at seven, the weekly worldview, sometimes you'll laugh and sometimes you'll groan, that's part of the course with the great Joe Salzone, great programming all week long on WGBB from Long Island's dating, Friday nights at six to Joyce Keller. Radio Psychic, Thursday nights at 11, Jimmy and Robin, Rock and Roll, Comedy, Midnights on Saturdays, and Current Events on Joe Salzone's Worldview, Sunday evenings at 7. So there is the lineup on GBB. And don't forget Thursday nights at 7 for Dave's Gone By, and then Thursday nights at 9 for Filler Up, both featuring me. So many programs, please listen to them. On GBB Radio, 1240 AM. On GBB Radio, 1240 AM. On GBB Radio, 1240 AM. Welcome back to Dave's Gone By. You know, we've been talking a lot about radio over the past couple of weeks, from the Pocket Rocket Music Finder to Light FM to CBS FM getting hijacked. And that's natural, because this is a radio show. That's what I do. But like everyone else, I also watch a lot of television. The major networks, cable, public television, which was nearly budget cut out of existence last month. Thank you, American government. They can spare $87 billion for Iraq, but a couple million is too pricey for Big Bird. That's the stupidity of these lawmakers. They feel public television is too narrow, too liberal, to be paid for by tax dollars. Doesn't matter that tax dollars pay for every speech George Bush makes and every flag-waving marching band at every parade and every podunk bird in America. Public television has Bill Moyers and Peter, Paul, and Mary and 4,000 travel shows, and that makes it too left-wing. Oh, But if you think that's narrow, look at cable. There are kids' channels, a lifetime channel for women, MTV for teenagers, sports networks for the guys, food networks, movie channels, nostalgia channels. Narrow is what cable is all about, should be about. Nevertheless, eyebrows were raised two weeks ago when plans were announced for a brand new cable channel, Logo. Logo will cater specifically to a gay and lesbian audience. Actually, the official demographic is, quote, gay, lesbian, transgender, and transsexual and Beatrice Arthur. Not surprisingly, Logo made its debut, or came out, in San Francisco. MTV, which created the channel, say they hope to run a mix of original programming and movies. Stuff like The Birdcage, Torch Song Trilogy, and, one assumes, an entire weekend devoted to Philadelphia. And most people are happy about the new channel. It's further evidence that gays are part of the mainstream, one step deeper into the national consciousness past queer eye and the L word. Of course, some Christian organizations are objecting because, you know, there aren't already enough TV networks with lying hypocritical Southern Jesus freaks with bad toupees. And some homosexuals are puzzled at the idea of an all gay network this late in the game with so many inroads finally made into commercial television and movies, and with gay people perfectly comfortable watching typical straight entertainment, they're asking what would really be served by an apartheid network? How would they define homosexual programming? Well, to answer that question, we have an infrequent but cherished guest, Peter Fitzgerald, 
Last time he was here, he was all excited about Harvey Firestein going into Fiddler on the Roof. Later on, he was talking about the whole Jim McGreevy scandal in New Jersey. Tonight, we're very happy to have Peter Fitzgerald weighing in on the new Gay Network logo. Welcome, Peter. Well, hello, Dave. And hello, everybody out there in Radio Land. Yes, I admit, I am moist with excitement over a brand new station for people like me. All gay, all pink, all the time. Imagine waking up every morning to see Judy Garland swinging from a cable car, or Faye Dunaway clutching a coat hanger and giving that little brat some discipline, or coming home after a long day's work, popping my feet into some fuzzy slippers, and seeing John Travolta seduce Lily Tomlin. Ha! Ah! Or one of those early Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I love pumping iron. And when I'm finished, I clean off my hand and watch an old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. But you know, what scares people, I think, is that they wonder how much gay programming is there. It's one thing to plan a weekend of movies and specials, or even a month or two, but 24-7 of queer casting is a tall order. I mean, sure, you can do some digital magic, like show old episodes of Macmillan Life, but replace Susan St. James with a giant hairy ass. But even with repeats, there's just a few hours a week, so I'd like to make suggestions on other programs that would fit the format as snugly as David Duchovny fits a Speedo. For example, in the morning, instead of the Today Show, we get the Today Show. Three minutes of news, two minutes of traffic to Fire Island, and 25 minutes of weather with Sam Champion. Wooja! After that, Will and Grace. Then, something for the ladies, old reruns of Rosie O'Donnell, or Ellen, or speeches of Eleanor Roosevelt. Then, another episode of Will and Grace. After that, it's time for game shows. They could bring back concentration with pornographic centerfolds hidden behind the cubes. Or show old episodes of Hollywood Squares, but just the parts with Paul Lynn as the center square, because almost everything that came out of his mouth was gay and almost everything that went into his mouth as well. Where do I go? Okay, lunchtime. The perfect time for another episode of Will and Grace. Then, a cooking show. A gay cooking show. Which means, there's no kitchen, just a guy on the phone making reservations to all the hottest new restaurants. Then, a travel program mixed with a reality series Two hot men journey to all these steamy places on the globe. They sample the bars, the clubs, the underground, and the winner is the one who goes the longest disease-free. After that excitement, it's time to wind down and relax with an episode of Will and & Grace. And then a soap opera with lots of intrigue and bitching and hunky men kissing and real soap. Ooh, I'm in a lather already. Time to simmer down with something for the kiddies. We spin off Tinky Winky from the Teletubbies into his own show, Tinky's Winky. We watch the Tinkmeister explore his sexuality while the television in his belly shows 24 hours of gay porn. Then it's time for the evening news, but made funny by intercutting short snippets of Will and Grace. At 7 o'clock, it's an hour of Barbara. The movies, the concerts, the interviews, the land of Streisand. And, in order to encourage more women to come out of the closet, the Streisand movies are shown complete and uncut, but with a paper bag digitally placed over her head. Then it's time for primetime comedy, like Everybody Loves Raymond, anally. Or King of Queens. And I don't mean a fat guy who drives a UPS truck. Different strokes. I guess they switch hands. All in the non-traditional family, one day at a time. The even odder couple, just shoot me and then clean me up. For lesbian viewers, there's I Dream of Jeannie and Sally and Fran, the Golden Shower Girls, and the sexy home design show Trading Faces. Then it's drama with gripping programs like Law and Order Hate Crimes Unit, Law and Order Bondage and Discipline, and Law and Order Prison Shower Conversations. Instead of cops and robbers, we have cops and rubbers and NYPD Blue Boy and Drag Nuts. A show about gay necrophilia, 
six inches under. For something more gentle, Little Houseboy on the Prairie, and an old-time western about men facing impotence, Deadwood. At 11 o'clock, it's the Evening News, read by a 15-year-old Filipino boy in a hula skirt. Or for something a little harder, 60 minutes, 90 if you take Viagra. Then it's the late night talk shows, but not Letterman, Leno, or Kimmel. Each queer eye guy gets his own show. Aunt Do, Cynthia Nixon, Ed Heche, and Catherine Zeta Jones. Well, she's not queer, but ladies, you can always hope. Then, after back to back episodes of Will and Grace, it's front to front episodes of Bruce and Jeffrey, followed by six hours of hardcore German porn. If Logo has any trouble finding that, I have some boxes in my basement. <clears throat> anyway, that's just my idea of a program day on cable, or gable. I just want to say bravo to MTV to make this effort, and let's hear it for Comcast. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Comcast, for being brave enough to give America an all city station. Boys, I'm available to host my own show, The Peter Fitzgerald Show, all about a young boy who knows he's a little different, and he comes to the big city to seek fame and fortune and male companionship. And he goes on all these dates with all these men, and if you'd like to be one of those men, write to Peter Fitzgerald, the care of Dave Dombey, Box 62, Hewlett, New York. I like all types, all ethnicities, all shapes, and all sizes. In other words, I'm open. Wide open. Wiggle, wiggle! This is Peter Fitzgerald saying, you go, Logo. Toodles! When I have a brand new hairdo And my eyelashes all in curl I float as the clouds on air do I enjoy being a girl Do you believe in pod? Not God, pod! Being able to download radio from the internet and listen to a podcast anytime, anywhere. Well, now you can do it with Dave's Gone By. 20 full episodes downloadable from theaterpod.com. Even without an iPod, you can just listen right on your computer. Go to theaterpod.com for radio on demand and hours of Dave's Gone By to enjoy. Theaterpod.com, it's free because pod is low. These are the Dave's, my friend, the perfect radio blend of comedy, talk, radio, and more. Yes, these are the Dave's. More than 60 complete episodes of Dave's Gone By, all on compact disc for your listening pleasure. Got a long drive home? Pop in a Dave. In the mood for a funny sketch or a fun interview, pop in a Dave. All CDs come in jewel cases with covers and photos and track listings, just $14 per CD, and that includes shipping and handling. Throw in another dollar, and I'll personally autograph the cover. If you're not sure which show to pick, just visit the Dave's Gone By website or email davesgoneby at aol.com and ask for the CD list. Audio cassettes are available too, so start your collection today. These are the Daves, my friend. Makes a great gift to send. Give them a try if you love Daves Gone By. Welcome back to Daves Gone By. Thanks so much for joining us on this mid-July jaunt through radio, television, and theater. Special thanks to Peter Fitzgerald for his locutions about Logo. You can see Peter Fitzgerald live every night walking the West Side Highway between 32nd and 38th Street. So far as I know, he doesn't spit it out, but Valerie Smaldone and Amy Coleman will for the next three weeks at the Workshop Theater, 312 West 36th Street, as part of the Midtown International Theater Festival. For tickets, call 212-868-4444, area code 212-868-4444. There's more information about Spit It Out at Valerie's website, valeriesmaldone.com, and catch her every weekday from noon to 4 on WLTW 106.7 Live FM. And speaking of radio, make sure you come back here to WGBB one hour from now for a show called Filler Up. We've been talking about an ideal radio show that isn't overly formatted, that offers a mix of old and new music, that has an intelligent person picking out songs in a way that has some balance and meaning. 
Well, this isn't it, but it is a show that I host where I get to play an eclectic musical mix of pop, folk, rock, reggae, blues, whatever feels right. Tonight, we'll go from the comedy of P.D.Q. Bach to the jangle rock of Belly to the wild blues of Screamin' Jay Hawkins. That's 9 to 10 tonight on Filler Up on AM 1240 WGBB. And if you want to hear more Dave's Gone By, well, for that, you have to go to the web. On DFSXRadio.com, they are doing the best of Dave's Gone By. A different episode every Thursday at 8, right after this show, and repeat it at 11. DFSXRadio.com. Or you can just click there from the link on my homepage, davesgoneby.org. And if that isn't enough Dave for you, my gosh, there's even more at theaterpod.com. You can download episodes to your iPod or listen to them right there on the website, absolutely free. Entire hour-long shows you can skim through. Go back and listen to parts over, because, you know, what else do you have to do in your life? And enjoy Dave's Gone By anytime you please. Theaterpod. Com. Special thanks to our sponsors, Hewlett Minuteman Press, 1315 Broadway in Hewlett. Please mention Dave's Gone By when you visit them. You'll get 10% off. We get the recognition that listeners are paying attention and frequenting our sponsors. The same goes for Performing Arts Insider. Get 10% off subscriptions if you write on the check, Dave's Gone By. For more information, go to PerformingArtsInsider.com or my website again. Dave's Gone By dot org. Last but not least, I want to thank program director Tom Ross, my sweet and amazing wife Joyce, and all of you for listening. Please drop me a line. Let me know what you think of the show. Dave's Gone By at AOL dot com. I've been known to read letters on the air, mostly consonants. I don't read as many vowels as I ought to, but hey, with your suggestions, that could change. Dave's Gone By at AOL dot com. Time to go by and leave the neighborhood tonight. See you at 9 for Filler Up, and I'll be back next week, Thursday, July 21st, 7 p.m., for another edition of Dave's Gone By. Until then, don't miss your days going by. This is Dave Lefkowitz. Good night. Spit it out. But make believe you enjoy it. And gone by. I will go my way and jump the hedges first. Drink the clear, clean water for to quench my thirst And I will watch the ferry boats and they'll get high Against the blue ocean, against the morrow sky And I will walk and talk and God and go away with rain Never, ever, never, ever get so old again. Sweet thing. Yeah, 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 Thank you.